Good day. Uh, so continuing to convert an L map uh, to uh, beam and luster. Let's get to where we are. Oh, better bump up. There you go, the fonts and stuff again. So I think we have some tests working now at the moment. Uh, test. Okay. Um, and so uh, what we have at the moment is on the main module here, um, we pass in some flags that starts the luster map um, and then off it goes. <clears throat> um, the init uh, produces a model um, which the Elm architecture that the Gleam also uses, or sorry, Luster uses, um, needs to get going. Um, and then we have, like, you know, it might do an update and then a view change on the model. Sorry, update on the model, uh, which might trigger um, a view update. Um, and what we're doing at the moment is we are doing this decode flags, we are slowly but surely building out the model so that things can be kicked off. Um, and this model will also be used during the sort of running of the app, making sure that any schedules that come back from WordPress um, get updated and so on. Uh, so yeah, sorry, this is a WordPress plugin, which uses the Helm front end at the moment. In the Helm version of this, oops, let's get to We have the flags type and I keep wondering whether I should do the same thing in the Gleam version um, because at the moment so in this Elm one in one go it creates a model based on decoded flags I can't do it quite the same um, because the Elm uh, application takes in like a uh, JavaScript object and understands that so it can just pluck out bits from it and then do some decoding on the data. Um, whereas I need in the Gleam, I think, to pass in a JSON string. So decode the string into JSON and then do the decoding of the fields that are slightly more complex. Um, but the difference here with the flags is that it simplifies things. So you get string values coming in where they are actually string um, that I then change to booleans. Um, in these two cases here. Um, and then there's things like the timer period is also a string, but actually um, is an integer, I think, um, and various other things. Um, whereas we'll see in the model, you can see that things have got uh, their types. They've got float, then bills here, and so on. It might make things easier if I follow that similar pattern. So. Let's have a look. At the moment, we're doing decode flags and we're creating a model straight away. Maybe we need to create some flags model such. We'll base that on this. Uh, yeah, we'll just take that. Let's check 
get down here. Okay. So, not worry about these at the moment. We'll try and just get this example working. Now I know for sure I don't need to refresh in, that can go. Um, and I already have like a method for getting the boolean from the string. And that does work on that JSON decode effectively. What's irking me here is that I am passing this flags that's coming into deco flags is of the entire JSON. And that entire JSON could look something like uh, what would I want to cut? It's a bit like this lump here. It's gonna be basically this. but just JSON and encoded as a string. And at the moment, just for this like one field here, I'm passing the entire JSON just so that I can convert it from a string that contains one to a boolean one, a uh, boolean true or an empty string to false. And then I do the same again, for example, events. And then when it comes to these other things, I would be, again, using the whole function to pluck out the field to do the conversion. It doesn't seem right. So, Let's change that up. Let's have a look at the docs for the JSON encoder. Uh, X doc gleam no one JSON. Definitely been there before. Okay. What I want to do is like this. I want to create a decoder, say this is the flags, pluck out this field and get, a, well in some cases I can do an int, uh, some cases I can do a string, things like um, the admin URL and the, uh, the number once. And then for other things, I need to do like a little bit more decoding. Um, and then I just pass it, pass this decoder with the de string, JSON string and get some result, which is hopefully flags and hopefully not an error. Let's have a look at that decode on the dynamics. Uh, yeah, I do want that now. So on the dynamic module, so I'm going to be, what am I going to be decoding? Right, so at the moment I'm going to decode these two fields. So I'm going to do a decode two, and then eventually I'll do three, four, five, six, seven. 
Yeah. Okay. So when I look at where are we? Decode two. So it takes basically the model. So that's a constructor for a model, which returns that. And then for the first field, it takes a function. That returns the result or a list of errors. Okay. All right. Okay. 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 Because that's where Right, yes, because string int and list string, these are all dynamic functions. So if we look at, say, int, okay, it says given a dynamic piece of data, try and decode it into an int or maybe an error if it's not an int as a result. So we can get an OK int or an error, which contains a list of decode errors. That's what it's done here. Error, a list, decode error, and then stuff. It expected an int, it found a string. OK, yeah, yeah, because that was hello instead of an int. Right, OK. That does change things up a bit for me, though. I'm not sure we've got time for this. Oh, well, have a go. Um, yeah, this is going to be... Yeah, but I think it will prove the right thing, because at the moment it's just not right. I'm doing individual decoding when I shouldn't. And I'm going to get a big lump of JSON back when it's doing get requests and things anyway. So I want to be able to decode that all in one go. So yeah, I've got to go. I've got to do this. I'm doing, yeah. All right. So this function is basically, well, that's going to change. Um, it's really just going to be a means to decode. <laughs> like quoted one so okay uh let's pluck out we're not going to do any json stuff in here so let's just take this and move that into here and then we're going to have at the moment a decode two going to get like this isn't it we're going to decode into flags now and now i've got to think about what am i using for what so example events that's going to be well, it's a field and it is a string so let's put in the actual field name because we're going to decode it here i'm going to pluck it out of the json here and then decode it so example events but i want a bool and there is this takes a dynamic bool and returns a bool 
but that's not what I have. I have a string. So I think I need, all right, okay, what I need is that intermediary function down here. To meet. that same signature. So that needs to be, so I can just do a decode. Um, decode string. decode json string field to build. That's a bit of a mouthful. Let's change that up. Let's say um, it's an integer string to build. Do the same here. And then we are taking in a single um, or a string. But it's dynamic. That might be a bit, a bit misleading. Let's call it Val. <laughs> um, and what do we want? We want, well, we want the same result as this. So we want result which is hopefully a bull, but could be a list of uh, dynamic decode error. Okay. So in theory, I'm doing too many of these dynamic dots. Hmm. It's going to clash with. Other stuff, isn't it? Ah, oh dear is we will import type dynamic um, we want field and Probably, what else might we want? Oh, we want a string for sure, because otherwise the field value could be anything. Well, as much as JSON is. So we would want Yeah, 
Yeah, well, we'll see in a minute. Probably a string. Oh, and decode error. Right, so that should shorten things up. Whoops. So, no oh, one decode. <laughs> That's going to change. Um, decode two, but we'll be getting rid of that in a minute. Uh, right, so dynamic dot. So, I should be able to get rid of that uh, and that. And that decoder. Oh, did I get that wrong? Oh, that's a type. Okay. Right. So We have a value coming in that we need to test. So I'm going to let, let OK, hopefully. I don't want to put a result there. Um, equal uh, string. on the val. So is it a valid string dynamic? If it is, we want to do a case on that. So this is all going away. We're going to do a case on OK. How do I do that? I've got enough coffee going on here. Well, the result. So if the string turns out to be uh, string, string, string. Right, yeah, so if I get an OK quote one, then I kind of want to mimic OK true. So that it satisfies this, I believe. Oh, we'll give it a go. So it's just an OK. Is that right? Yay, OK. Now the next one doesn't work. Uh, and it won't. What I'm really looking for is an OK empty string. And that should return false. Anything else is not valid. Not, not that I know of. I guess potentially zero could be false. But I don't think I'll see that. I think that always collapses down to an empty string. So we'll see. Uh, right, so I can't take this away because I need to handle the error case. So what do I put there? I need an error. How do I create an error?
can't do I can't just construct one, can I? No, because what I need is like to say, oh, error something. Returns error something. Oh, it's still, it, all right, okay. I still got to cover the case. Where we don't get an okay? Oh, because the okay could have a bazillion different things that we don't want. Hmm. So if it is something else, so if it's like, okay, hello. I want to say, no, that's false. It's, it's value. And it's a string. So the error here will cut will catch things like oh you've passed an integer. Uh, which is that valid? No. No, there are always strings coming back. Um so yeah, if you pass an actual bool there, um that error would catch that. But if it's another string, like OK2, I need that to be a false instead. Like an OK false. How do I do that? Uh, There's something I can do in results. Um, oh, does that not change? Where's result? 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 Okay. What have we got? It's okay. Right, so that would just actually return the value true or false. I don't want that. Because I want it to be false. And I don't want to do his error because I actually wanted the error. If it is an error. Hmm. All right, so this would kind of work, but be a bit complex. So I can map over it, and if it's an okay something or other, I could just like return, I could do that whole case thing again and go, if it's an okay, okay one, then we get true, okay empty, we get, um, well, anything else, any other okay, we would get 
false. Hold on a minute. Could I not? All right. Did I check whether I could do just this? Okay. Oops. Because that satisfies the, okay, it's always going to return an okay, but it's an okay true when I get a one in the string. Anything else, if it's like a boolean or integer, I'm going to determine, I'm going to say that's false. That might work. Okay. And then obviously here it's complaining because I haven't got the other field in yet, which is auto fresh. Uh, oh. Comma. So now I can say, okay, I want to decode from the flags that come in using that decoder and then this model can go away yeah so and now that's complaining because it's expecting to produce a model but we're getting a result flags or decode error okay so things are going to change a little bit here so we want we are returning the result, which is hopefully flags, but could be a JSON decode. Error. Yeah, don't need to do the let. Is that right? The decode does do it. Yeah, well, this is what they're doing. So they're just doing a plain decode from the JSON string, as it's called, flags. And then they're getting their model that they've decoded to or select the type, and then they're doing a JSON decode error. Okay. So I should, in theory, that's a little bit simpler, I think, than what I had before. So I'm going, all right, this is a string. And if it's really a string with one in it, I'm good. That's true. Anything else is false. And that's my little decoder for these Boolean fields. Okay, now the test should go bang because I've changed the names and return types. Okay. Uh, right. Yeah, that'll be interesting, changing all these things up. So these are got to change now. 
uh, data dot model needs to go away because decode flags is now a hopefully okay flags So so right. Let's try it out on this one here. So in theory. Okay, I'm going to import type flags. Um, and decode flags and int string to bool because down here, yeah. So we need to change We need to change decode JSON string build to boot. Oh, I'm glad I'm getting shot at that long build name. Uh, function name uh, to int string to build. It's not that much shorter, but. And let's get rid of that data dot everywhere. Okay, that might cause some issues. Oops. <laughs> yeah, answers to that. Uh, internal data dot yeah that was silly right um yeah we're not getting a model on the moment anywhere so I'm good to get keep that out so do we just get flags No, we're getting a OK flags. Interesting. Oh, it's wrong anyway. Hmm. So, unknown variable. Flags as a type, it cannot be used as a value. Right, 
but is also a constructor. Does that mean I can just call it like that? Huh. Is that right? So that was Line 11, yeah, so that was right. That was breaking there. Now it's on 14, which is correct. Okay. So I can switch out Let's just, just do one by one. We'll do <clears throat> Okay, flags, oops, uh, yep, not doing refreshing anymore, okay. 17, same thing. Okay. Flags. Oh, did I add the thing? No. There we go. Right, now we start getting something. Okay. Flags. Okay, flags again. I did write a few tests here, didn't I? That's good. And again here. Okay. String to pull. All right, yeah, yeah. So this is all changed here now. All right, this is very different now. So if the value coming in from the field is a empty string, I expect false. Oh no, I expect an OK false for the decoder. Oh, and it should be a, oh, let's get dynamic in here as well then. Import clean dynamic from uh, so we just grab anything. I think that's right. So I should be able to do that. Okay. So same again here. Um, if I were to pass in a wibble string, I would expect it to return K. Okay. Oh, not there yet. We want it to return here and OK false. Right, 
Right, now we're getting... Bro, that's the same problem. So let's pass in a um, completely different thing. Let's pass in um, an actual integer. I still expect, okay, false. And then on the last one, we'll actually get true. So this should just be one. So we've got a dynamic from quoted one and we want an OK true. Uh, what's that? Data decode flags. OK, in the UI itself now. Right, so in theory, I think They might work. But we need to check. Um, need to fix up the UI because that doesn't understand what's going on yet. So here. <laughs> It's not quite so simple anymore. We can use decode flags on the init, but it's going to return flags now as a model, uh, so as a type. And then we need to see whether it's OK or not, I guess, whether it's an OK model. think if we what do we do Oh no, we've got to decode the flags. We've got to pluck the flags out. So we've got to do like we do in the Elm. So in the Elm, uh, if I look at flags, yeah. So in the Elm, we have these flag bits and we need to stick them into the model one by one. This bit, so this is kind of like a step ahead here. So we need to do the same. But different. Let's we're going to import uh, where to go up there. Um, Import model, and we're going to also import T code flags. And then here, don't need that anymore. Uh, in fact, you 
we need the result of that. So let uh, well, I guess that's kind of like a result. quick um so i kind of need to do a case on it But I need a model. So I need model equals, and then I do a case. So if I get, um, okay, F for flags, then I can construct a new model. with example events f dot uh, uh, it doesn't show me does it it does oh. okay and then Auto refresh. Same, I want the field that is auto refresh. And then the model also has refresh in, but that's always false. An exhaustive pattern, yes, I know. So if it's anything else, I want basically this same. But we're just defaults. So do this, but for anything else, don't have that, I have false. False. And then here, I should be able to just return that model variable. Unknown, oh. Okay. Unexpected end of input. Hmm. Where's that? Fifteen. because it got nothing because the JSON was incorrect does that change it? That's the same. Oh, okay. Um. 
And what if so is this the same problem? Right, okay, 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 okay. Right, so we're getting proper decode errors now. Oh of course. Right, yes. They're not okay anymore. It's like the JSON doesn't match. So these are tests that the JSON is rubbish um, and we should get a decode error from it because we are expecting good JSON coming in from the app. The app creates it and starts off with that. So, okay, so that is a valid issue. That is a failure that we wouldn't expect really, but we should test for it. Okay, so this one fails with an ever unexpected line. Sorry, unexpected input. Okay. Right, in that case, all of that changes. Yeah. Where's that coming from? That's JSON, isn't it? I believe. Yes, okay. Right, and then the next one is, oh, that's a biggie. So it's saying, okay, we've got something that looks like JSON, but none of the fields we expect are there. That's okay. That's a dynamic. I think. Oh, actually, it might be adjacent. Hmm. Oh. Okay. And then we've got the next one very similar. So we've got a field and it's missing example events, which is true. Uh, Jason again for that one. And then this one, it's just the same error. Okay, we'll keep it. Do you know why I copied that? might have screwed things up there. Yeah. 
Okay. And that passes. Okay. Um, right. Uh, well, we're basically done then. <clears throat> so we have decode flags working as long as it gets all the fields. We want, so we're getting, right, that's not quite right, is it? We need a couple more tests there. Let's do, if they're both empty, we should expect false. Okay. There we've got auto refreshes. Let's do let's do the other way around. So well, that should fail now because I've switched it. Yeah. And then if we do a true here and a false here, that should pass. Cool. Um, and what if so what if we pass in some junk? So and here we go, oh actually. We passed one here and ripple here. Yeah, cool. Smart. Okay, that's good. Now I gotta go. Um, so I best save that off. So I uh, Okay, so I'll add everything here. So in here, hmm, actually, didn't quite finish that. JSON object for flags. That's okay. That's okay. That's okay. We'll keep that there. Yeah, not sure about that. And decode JSON object flags to model. Uh, decode JSON string to flags
I X Y yeah, this stuff. Well, that's like. Got the flags, doing the decode. Switched imports a little bit. Fixed up the tests. Cool. All right, uh, I best go. Um, so until next time, uh, thanks for watching and take care. Bye.